Hello and welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today I get the chance to unbox and showcase Elden Ring, the board game, Realm of the Grafted King. Now, for those of you that don't know, I have just been in Manchester, well, Europe, all week getting a chance to play through, dive into, and learn exactly what's happening here in the Elden Ring board game. Not only am I insanely excited, but I also have a lot of content coming out. A conversation and interview with, well, the lead designers, a full gameplay with three other people, some content creators you might be familiar with, and, of course, a miniature showcase starting right now. So this is the Elden Ring board game. Well, at least the prototype copy that I'm able to showcase and share with you. And I know, it's just absolutely ridiculous and glorious. I mean, don't you want this giant beast of a miniature for a Gil? Uh, or Godric the Grafted over here with his flipping uh, dragon head in his second form and the axe just scraping across the ground here? It's brutal, it's amazing, and it's fantastic. Or just the menace, menacing silhouette here that has been my demise uh, more times than I would like to publicly admit, although this is Elden Ring. Of course, of course it has been. Uh, so let me give you a, a quick overview of some of the core mechanics of this game and, and what they're actually doing when, it, when they approach the board game version, the board game scenario, so that you can stay tuned and be ready for the gameplay, the interviews, the preview, all the other content that I'm going to be bringing to the channel here. And by the way, if you're enjoying this so far, hit that subscribe button down below because this whole next week will be a roster of Elden Ring content. I don't want you to miss any of it, so make sure you sub. By the way, it's completely free and you can always unsub when you decide that you're done with the content. That being said, Let's talk about Elden Ring. Well, first off, Steamforge Games is doing some really smart things when it comes to approaching the Elden Ring board game. As you can tell by the title, this is Realm of the Grafted King, and that's going to be the first wave or first box of content we're going to be getting. Now, there is going to be some expansions and exclusives and tons of different content unlocked throughout the course of the Kickstarter campaign. They, they do a very interactive Kickstarter campaign, allowing you, the audience, and me as a content creator to encourage my audience to go over there and vote on whatever it is we want to see included in the final product. Needless to say, I'm looking for uh, a few core let's say Easter eggs to, to be included, things that we find or have attached ourselves to when it comes to playing through the video game itself. I mean, anyone else interested in a dog? I know, I know I am. That being said, they are going to be approaching all the different realms that you have as standalone big boxes throughout the course of a content release over multiple seasons and in multiple years. 
So we're starting, we're starting here with the Realm of the Grafted King, which is going to give you all the content for that Limhurst area, right? Uh, this is where you first start your adventure. This is the showdown with Godric. This is where uh, Agil, the, the dragon, comes flying in and lands, destroying an entire uh, community of people. This is the start of our adventure, and all of our characters will be able to level up, progress, and follow through from campaign to campaign, or at any point you can jump in and dive into any of the different boss battles or scenarios you want to face off, along with some of the other standalone little core side missions that will give you a better entry point or a better entryway into the final game. Now, it is also going to be broken down into a two-stage game process. It's a cooperative exploration game with boss battling elements which means you're going to be using asymmetric characters to plunge your way through this tile system here, flipping tiles and placing them down on various locations on the board. You're going to be gathering resources, going on side quests, and trying to accomplish whatever the Guidance of Grace cards are presenting to you. In this first scenario that we've been able to play, it was mostly learning the ropes, right? Fight a few battles, gather a few resources, interact with a few different people around the tabletop until we can finally unlock and be able to show down down with the first boss. And that's how all of these chapters will be structured. An exploration phase that'll take about 20 to 30 minutes per player. Uh, maybe a little bit shorter if you're getting up into the higher, like, four-player count, but it was definitely about 90 minutes, uh, 60, 70 to 90 minutes for a full three-player game. And then you'll have another about maybe 15 minutes per player for the actual showdown. Now, the showdown is going to be built off the back of these books, and you're going to have a mix of them. You see, during the exploration phase, everyone's going to be going off on their own adventure, their own journey. They're going to be gathering resources for themselves or for the party. They're going to be utilizing those resources to upgrade their armor, their weapons, really get equipped. And they're also going to be fighting any of the multitude of denizens that exist around, well, the world of Elden Ring. Uh, as you're exploring, you might come into various encounters, and you'll flip open your own personal battle book or your own personal scenario book. Uh, let me actually check what these are officially called, your own personal quest book. And in these quest books, you will have the opportunity to uh, read a little bit of flavor text, see how your enemy is going to react, and then fight in this very specific battle system. Now, each of these battle systems uh, deal with positioning more than they actually deal with maybe uh, wrapping yourself around your prey or anything like that. It's all about how you're actually stancing and jarring and moving and rolling and dodging uh, to try to decide if you want to be aggressive and rolling to the front to dodge that attack and then stab them through the gut, or whether you pull back, allowing yourself to dodge and block and stun them, and then casting a spell to just annihilate all of their health points. Like over here, you can see that I have three rows in this position that allow me to move up or down. This back row, I'll be able to draw an extra card and get more defense uh, when I'm actually being attacked. So, strong position. Here, I'll be able to change my position on the initiative track, which is a set of randomized cards that come out every round. And that's going to show not only how the creatures that we're fighting are going to be reacting to us, but also when and how we get to react to them. So if you want a little bit more ability to maneuver or jive, you stay there in the center. And then up here, I get to draw one extra icon card when I'm trying to fight my enemy, which means I might be able to hit them better or I get better odds at actually taking them down in one fell swoop, but I'm also more vulnerable to their counterplay as well. So we'll be collecting resources, we'll be fighting in our own little scenarios, and everyone continues playing at the same time. So I'll take one action, one, one uh, cycle of card play here, and then it'll move on to the next person's turn. So no one's paused or frozen. It's, it's really about maybe 30 seconds per player for everyone to continue resolving their turn at the deep end of it. We're talking 15 seconds for most of the turns that you're actually taking, so the game keeps a good pace and a good flow. Once you've accomplished and went through most of your Guidance of Grace cards or all of your Guidance of Grace cards, you'll show up at that final boss battle. And this is where things really take another piece. You'll see this in the gameplay. I just have to tell you how cool this is. Our books, the books that we're using to actually fight with the, the little individual mobs that we have, combine into this giant puzzle in the center and we have this whole new showdown terrain and all of us collectively as a party are now fighting on that same tableau getting in each other's way utilizing our strengths to leverage and maneuver other people and potentially defeating the boss which is much harder uh, to do than it is to say 
That's the core concept. After that, you're going to be gaining more resources. You're going to be getting a, a big buff of stats and health points. There's not a lot of grinding when it comes to this version of the game. Uh, in terms of Elden Ring, you're going to have a certain level progression that you get at the end of every single cycle. Uh, and so you're going to be able to get weapons and armor and gear and decide how you want to spend your resources for some of the different abilities and, and ways that you're going to customize and build your deck. But when it comes to like major character progression, the story is going to control that by encouraging you to continue stepping your way up by defeating boss after boss. It's also not a linear story because that wouldn't be right for Elden Ring, right? This is going to be a big open world sprawling adventure allowing you to venture off in different directions and fight different creatures at different points in time. Now, does that mean everything's going to be accessible to you or you're going to be able to actually defeat everything you can go fight against? Probably not. Probably not because this is going to be a brutal game. But if you find a boss that you're just not sure how to take down yet, you can go back and you can train, you can prepare, you can take down some lesser enemies and then you can circle back around and fight that creature one more time and hopefully continue moving and progressing forward. This is a beast of a game, and I've had an amazing time over in Manchester checking it out. I'm excited to be able to bring you more content and show you the glorious, up-close, uh, gooey B-roll that all of you, I know, are looking for. So, thank you for being here, thank you for watching, thank you for checking out this video. Hit that subscribe button down below because we're excited about more Elden Ring content, and this is the first in probably five or six videos coming out over the next week, sharing as much stuff with you as I can. All right. We'll see you next time.